So as you can see, we've got this um, these three vectors in the corner, uh, each one independent. And what we now want to do is we want to create four corners that uh, look just the same as this one. So we've got a tool here called Mirror Objects. I'm going to click on that. And you'll see in the Mirror Objects tool, we have a couple of settings here at the bottom to consider. One is to copy the original objects. If I were to uncheck that, basically if I was to mirror these three vectors, what it would do is it would create it, so if I mirrored it to the right, it would create a mirrored object exactly the same as this. The problem is that this one would now be gone. If I click copy the original vectors, or if I copy the original object, then it will retain this one and create a mirrored object right beside it. You see there's also an option, just as there was with the trim tool, to join the mirrored vectors. So after we mirror them, they will actually join them. In this case, we're not going to use that, but in most cases you would use it because you do want those mirror those objects to be joined. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my left mouse button down just above the three vectors, and I'm going to drag my mouse over all three of them. And as I basically trap everything inside the bounding box, when I release it, everything is selected. You'll notice if I don't completely wrap the bounding box around all three. You see a portion of the the one on the right is not inside the box. If I do that, then I only get the ones that are completely inside the box. So I'm going to select all three, and I'm going to mirror these three objects to the right. Now I'm going to drag my mouse over all, all of the vectors, and I'm going to mirror them to the bottom. And as you can see, we've created a um, a rectangle with the inverted corners, and I'm now closing the mirror tool. Now, as I mentioned before, all of these vectors are independent of each other, which is not what we want to have happen. And that's why we would join them automatically when given the option to do so. Now, if we were doing an architectural drawing, having all these vectors separate would be just fine. For example, if we were doing an architectural drawing of a house, we wouldn't want the windows and the doors to be connected. If I want to resize the shape of the window, don't necessarily want to resize the shape of the door. So I'm better to have all of our or vectors separated. In this case, this becomes tr uh, troublesome for us when we're doing machining operations. For example, supposing I wanted to machine a profile toolpath around this rectangle. Well, I might start with this vector here. The tool is going to come into the material here. It's going to machine over to here. Then it's going to come out of the material. Then it's going to go back in, machine this line, come back out of the material, and so on and so forth until it goes all the way around. Not only very inefficient in terms of time, but probably a little messy as well as the tool it, it, it drops into and descends from the material, it's going to be uh, creating a tool dwell marks, which may make it a little bit of a messy machining operation. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of these vectors are connected. So I'm going to drag my mouse over all of them. And you see when they turn red or magenta in color, then they're all selected. I'm going to go up here to uh, the tools that we have here to join vectors. Now you see when I push my left mouse button down, because I do have several options. I've got three options here that are not available to me. The first one being joining vectors with a line. You see it's grayed out. The second one joining vectors with a curve. It's also grayed out. And the third one joining vectors by moving uh, uh, points to a common end. The reason they're grayed out is these tools are only designed to use when you're using two vectors at a time. In this case, we've actually got 12 of them. But the one that is available to us is, calling joining, is called joining vectors with coincident nodes. So I'm going to select that. Now you can see when I select join vectors with coincident nodes, it the the tool um, basically is giving us some options here. And essentially all that the joining vectors with coincident nodes is telling us is that within a specific tolerance, so in this case within 0 0.001 or one thousandth of an inch, basically any vectors that are a thousandth of an inch or closer, it's going to join them. So if you zoom in on this, you will see, as I mentioned earlier, I'll just deselect these for a second. So if I click on this line, you'll see that we've got two vectors that are not connected. But as I zoom in as close as I can get, it sure does look like they're connected. So they're actually touching, but they're not connected. So within a certain tolerance, in this case a thousandth of an inch, any lines a thousandth of an inch or closer are going to be joined together. Anything that's more than a thousandth of an inch apart, it's not going to connect those. And so here's really what we're looking for. Right now we have 12 vectors, and what we're looking for when we're done is to have one vector. So when I click Join, if I deselect our object and then reselect it again, <coughs> you'll see that now when I click on it, 
it's all one object. So now I can machine this and it will machine it as a continuous operation starting at the start point, machining all the way around until it completes the operation, which is exactly what we're looking for.